Hey kids, how's everybody out there in YouTube land today? So I got a question I'm, I'm trying to get an answer to and I'm kind of do a little crowdsourcing here and see if we can get a good information. Um, how much? How much is enough? Now, I don't mean money, I, not about money. How much is enough? There's always something going on on Grandpa's farm. A place where you're always welcome. Come on, Lily, let's go feed. Um, <clears throat> as a as a homesteader, I think one of the biggest problems, questions that we run into is how much is enough. A lot of people out there are new to this, you know. There's COVID nineteen and the economy shutting down. Got a lot of people thinking about homesteading, and so a lot of people have the same question: How much is enough? If I'm going to <clears throat> plant tomatoes so that I can feed myself and my family for the year with tomatoes. Um, how much is enough? You know, you got slicing tomatoes, you got eating tomatoes, you got salsa, you got pasta sauce, and you know, when there's pasta sauce, you got marinara sauce, you got your meat sauce, you got your fish sauce. There are different pasta sauces. Um, what else do you use tomatoes for? You know, for making soups and for adding to stock, and you know, there's, there's so many things. So how much is enough, and, and how much of what type? How, how many, uh, how many paste type tomatoes do I need, versus how many slicing tomatoes do I need to feed me and my family? I, I don't know the answer to that. So I'm interested in having you guys respond. Get in the comments down below. Tell me how much you plant. Why you plant that much? How much you're trying to create? Potatoes. How, how many potatoes do you plant? What kind of potatoes do you plant? How many? Beans. You know, how many beans are you putting in? What about your broccoli and your cabbages? What about squash? Yeah, yeah, I know. Zucchini squash. You put in one plant plant of zucchini and you got wheelbarrow loads of zucchini. I understand that. <clears throat> but what about your, your summer squashes or your winter squashes? Your, you know, I like patty pans. I like the yellow crooknecks. I like zucchini. I like different types of squash. How much of each one of those do you need to plant? What about beans, dry beans for putting up for storage? How much dry beans do you need? Um, I think this is probably one of the biggest questions that people run into. <clears throat> and you know, this applies across the gambit of all aspects of being on a homestead. I'll give you an example. Here in Ohio, where I'm located, uh, I can feed a cow, an animal unit, they call it an animal unit, now that's a mama cow and a calf. That's an animal unit, a beef unit, <clears throat> or a dairy unit, I guess. <clears throat> I can feed a mama cow and a calf. I can graze them on one acre of land. If I have one acre of land, I have enough land for a cow and a calf to eat all summer long. Where I lived in Montana, it took 20 acres, 30 acres in some places, because the grass was so poor there and grew so slowly. So you have to know your area. You can check with your extension agent as to you know how much of an animal unit your area will <clears throat> provide for, and that gives you a pretty good clue on what you got to do. But then uh, you know think about that. If you want to raise pigs, how much land do you need? Um, how much feed do you need? Are you going to feed your pigs? Are you going to raise the pig food, or are you going to buy it? You know, and this whole idea of going into homesteading, people talk about self-sufficiency. You know, it's one thing to grow your own vegetables. <coughs> Excuse me a second. Ugh. It's one thing to grow your own vegetables, but what about raising your pig feed and your cow feed and your horse feed and your goat feed and your chicken feed? You know, not, not only do you have to plant sweet corn for yourself to enjoy, but what about field corn to feed your animals? What about wheat and barley and oats to feed your animals? Are you planting that, and how much are you planting? These are very tough questions, and in fact, I think probably the single <clears throat> largest question out there for anybody in the homesteading genre is, how much of this do I need? And, and of course, you know, there's, we all know there's really no right answer, okay? I know people are going to come back, well, it depends on the weather. Well, sure, it depends on the weather. Some years I can plant, you know, X number of tomatoes and have more tomatoes than I can shake a stick at. And then next year I can plant the exact same tomatoes in basically the same ground, giving them the same quality of care, 
and not have hardly any tomatoes. One year to the next, they all vary. And so we have to adjust for that. We have to count on that. So again, it begs the question, how much is enough? If I'm going to be self-sufficient, how many tomato plants do I need? How many cucumber plants do I need? <clears throat> Pickling cukes versus eating cukes. Um, so so I'm, I, I'd like to hear a lot of feedback on this. I'd like you to get in the comments down below. Of course, you know, ring the bell and subscribe and all that kind of stuff. But get into the comments down below and, and give me some feedback. I really think this is, should be almost a series of, of a number of videos that we talk about this subject. <clears throat> and I'd be interested to hear the take on this from other uh, other YouTube channels, other homesteading channels. So share this with your favorite homesteading channels and, and ask them the question, how much? How much is enough? Let's see if we can compile some data uh, that would give people this answer. You know, if you're going to start a homestead and you're just getting started, uh, you know, and you have a family of four, let's say, uh, let's give some parameters, uh, then you should be planting X number of tomatoes. Or you should be planting, you know, X, uh, X feet or rows of uh, potatoes. Um, and you should plant, you know, this many onions. Uh, because, uh, of course, everyone's diet's a little different. People eat differently. I, I, I get that. I understand that. But let's come up with a basic standard um, that I think there used to be. Uh, I don't know if I've seen any of that recently. I think there used to be. And I've heard people throw out figures like, you know, oh, you need 200 square feet of garden per person or 300 square feet of garden per person. And that's fine. That gives us one number or an area to work with. But what about, what about the actual numbers? How many seeds do I have to put in the ground in order to get the food that I need to feed myself and my livestock. Let's not forget them. Years ago, <laughs> years ago, I got into a big argument with another YouTube channel. Um, um, people that live off grid, I'll just say that. <clears throat> I don't want to name names, but um, anyhow, the, the guy got in an argument with me about how much acres you need. And I said that what people need is 40 acres. Um, that was a long-standing uh, uh, number came from the federal government. You know, people were encouraged to go in and farm and, and settle in a particular area. Uh, the government was giving out allotments, 40-acre allotments. He got 40 acres and a mule. Uh, why 40 or he got a team of ox? Why a team of ox? Because uh, an acre of land, and I'm a real estate broker, so I understand this, an acre of land is called an acre of land. The reason why 640 acres is one acre of land is because that's how much ground a man with a pair of oxen could plow in a day. True story. That's the origin of the term acre. One acre of ground is how much land a man with a team of oxen could plow in a day. 640 acres. That would be one hell of a day. I'll tell you that right now. I'm sorry, not 640 acres. That would be a section. <clears throat> An acre of land is 40, 43,560 square feet, about 208 feet by 208 feet, roughly. That's how much an acre of land is, 208 feet by 208 feet. So it takes a man with a pair of uh, oxen a full day to plant an acre. Uh, 640, by the way, that's a section. That's that's a full section. One mile square. That's a section. But anyhow, so how many acres do you need to plant? You know, I don't know. And are you feeding your livestock or are you just feeding yourself? I don't know. Um, but I do think we need to come up with some of, these, some of this information for people. I do think 40 acres is probably the right size. You need 40 acres of arable, tillable ground in order to raise enough food for yourself and your family. Yourself and your family, you know, an acre or two garden would probably provide everything you need vegetable-wise. The rest of it, livestock feed. Hay, oats, groats, barley, corn, wheat, all that needs space to grow so you can feed your animals all year long. So, anyhow, get in the comment section down below. Let me know. In the meantime, please do like and subscribe. Uh, please share my videos with other people. In fact, in this particular one, in this particular one, I'm going to ask you to share this video with your other YouTube channels that you're aware of. And let's see if we can get them to do some collaborations 
and see if we can get them to come up with some answers on their own. Like Jess, uh, Jess Amaya over at Roots of Refuge Farm, you know, she plants a ton of tomatoes. Well, this year she also put a lot of potatoes and some other things. Why does she plant so many tomatoes? Does she really eat that many? Um, you know, what's the reasoning for that? Uh, I look at uh, uh, Justin Rhodes and his family and, and how much acreage they have planted in gardens. Um, you know, how much are they really eating? You know, how much lettuce do you need to plant? How much Swiss chard do you need to plant? How much kale do you need to plant? How much turnips, rutabagas, parsnips? You know, how much of those do you need to plant for yourself? Um, I mean, I, I know generally this should be somewhat menu driven, you know, depending on what you like to eat. And I'm going to use parsnips as an example. Parsnips is a sort of carrot looking vegetable. Um, a little bit harder uh, than a carrot and uh, more of an earthy taste. Um, I like parsnips. I like to put a cut of parsnips and put them in things like beef stews. I understand some people will roast parsnips and eat them. Uh, some people will mash. They'll boil and mash parsnips, turnips, rutabagas. And they'll make like mashed potatoes. They'll make mashed turnip, mashed rutabaga and eat that. Uh, I need to try some of those things. i be honest. I really haven't experimented with a lot of those vegetables that way. I plan to do that. Uh, but, you know, how much of all those do you need to plant? And, of course, you know, everyone's different. I understand that. Everyone's going to have certain proclivities in their diet that, that they're going to need to address. But I think as a starting point, we should try to put together some sort of a, a guideline as a starting point. So that's my question, folks. How much is enough? Please give me some answers, if you would. Please share this with the other YouTube channels. Let's see if we can get some other people's input in. How much is enough? Okay, thanks guys. Like and subscribe, share. We'll have more for you later. Bye. Well, how about them toad suckers? Ain't they sappy? Sucking them toads all sure make them happy. Hug them mug of toad suckers way down south. Sticking them sucky toads in Zay mouth. I be a toad sucker knowing a duck it. You just find an old toad and you rare back and suck it. Folks, you have a good day. Bye.